Hi, this is Mrs. Miller again, and we're going to be talking today about perfect competition. Perfect competition is the first of four market structures. The other structures are considered to be imperfect competition. The characteristics of a perfectly competitive firm include the fact that there are many small firms. Each firm will produce identical products. In fact, they're perfect substitutes, things like tomatoes and sunglasses and avocados. It's very easy for firms to enter and exit the industry, which is why there will be lots of competition, and the seller has no need to advertise because they can sell all they want at the market price. Firms are price takers. They don't have any impact on the price at all. If a firm charges above a market price, no one will buy. They'll just go to one of the other firms. So there's no reason to price low because consumers will buy just as much as the market can produce. The seller has no control over price in a perfectly competitive market. The perfectly competitive industry is simply a supply and demand graph. Recall that I told you that competitive firms were price takers. As price takers, the price is the same at all quantities demanded, so the demand curve for each firm is perfectly elastic, a horizontal straight line, and the demand line equals the price of the good. But what is the additional revenue for selling an additional unit? Well, the first unit earns $15, the second unit earns $15, and this goes on forever because remember the firm can sell all they want at the market price. Marginal revenue, therefore, is constant at $15. Since total revenue increases at a constant rate, the marginal revenue also equals the average revenue. That means that marginal revenue equals demand equals average revenue equals price. You can remember this line by calling it Mr. DARP. Let's add the cost curves to our graph. Marginal cost is a Nike swoosh as shown there, it's kind of, or a big check mark, whichever you prefer. ATC and AVC both kind of look like smiles. They cross the marginal cost line at their lowest point. The firm shown here is in equilibrium. That means it's making a normal profit. Remember that a firm that makes a normal profit is able to pay both direct and indirect costs. This firm is allocatively efficient because price equals marginal cost. They're producing what people want. And productively efficient because price equals minimum ATC. They're producing at the lowest cost. When ATC is below the Mr. Darp line, the firm is making a profit. This can happen in the short run. In the long run, because there are no barriers to entry or they're very, very low, more firms will enter the market, the supply for the industry will shift, and we'll have a new Mr. Darp line that brings the firm back into equilibrium at a lower price. If ATC is above the Mr. Darp line, the firm is suffering a loss. In this firm, they are covering all of their average variable costs and some of their fixed costs, so the firm will continue to operate even though it is making a loss. If average variable cost is equal to the Mr. Darp line, the firm is still suffering a loss, and this is considered our shutdown point. The firm is indifferent as to whether it will shut down or stay open, because they can still pay their average variable cost. However, if both ATC and AVC are above the Mr. Darp line, then the firm is definitely going to shut down. Notice that the green area, the difference between ATC and AVC, is the fixed cost that would be the actual loss the firm is suffering. The orange area are variable costs that they're no longer paying. Because the firm chooses to shut down and other firms who are also not making a profit would shut down, the supply curve for the industry would decrease because there are fewer sellers in the industry. That would create a new Mr. Darp line at a higher price and a lower quantity in the industry. Let's say that there's a change in demand for the good in the industry. Perhaps the Surgeon General announces that avocados are good for your health and this is the avocado market. So we would see demand increase which would create a new Mr. Darp line because remember the firm is a price taker. So now the firm is earning profits. This will cause more firms to enter the industry because remember there are no barriers to entry or exit and the economic profits that the firm was earning in the short run will disappear in the long run. 
We've looked at profit and loss, but let's look at how you determine how much the profit or loss is. Looking at this firm, the very first question we should ask ourselves is how much should be produced. Every firm produces where MR equals MC at the demand line. So in this firm, we would produce a quantity of 9 and our price taken from the industry would be 7. How much is total revenue? Well, price times quantity equals total revenue. So $7 times the quantity of 9 would equal a total revenue of $63. How much are our total costs? Price at average total cost times quantity equals the total cost. In our example, $5 times a quantity of 9 equals $45 in total cost. Is there a profit or loss? And if so, how much? Total revenue minus total cost equals profit or loss. In our example, $63 minus the $40 in total cost equals an $18 profit, evidenced by the green shaded area in the graph. I hope this helps you understand perfect competition a little better. Thanks for watching and have a great day.